We want to continue in our exposition on the book of Psalms. Psalm 49, verse 9. The Bible reference is very powerful. There, the Lord gave a mighty revelation to Prophet David. See, he is our Lord's biological father. In that reference, the Spirit of the Lord spoke through Prophet David that any soul or any spirit that is redeemed by God, the Redeemer, the Spirit shall live forever and shall no longer see the grave. Last week, the juncture we got to in our exposition was the coming to the world of the Redeemer through our patriarch, Abraham. The man who God loved so dearly. He pronounced him a righteous. God loved him very much. And called him his friend. Through this great patriarch of us, our father of faith, Christ, the foundation of life, came to the world. And where we concluded last week, this is Galatia, which is Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. There we read that Christ, this foundation of life, has redeemed us sons of men from the cause of the law. The cause which Adam, a sinner, placed on us sons of men. That Christ, the foundation of life, has redeemed us from the cause. 
And how did he redeem us from the cause? Paul apostle the apostle Paul says he bought the cause for us and by bearing the cause for us Christ fulfilled the law in Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 22 and 23 where God commanded that anyone who is hanged on the tree is an accursed being therefore the very day he was nailed to that tree he should be brought down he should not hang on that tree overnight Paul, the apostle Paul says it was this law of God that the redeemer came to fulfill when he bore our cause on that tree, on the cross. And in verse 14 of Galatians chapter 3, Paul, the apostle Paul says, Christ bore our spells with sons of men, which God placed on us because of the sin of Adam. That the blessing of God that God promised to all sons of men through Abraham might come upon us sons of men. Paul then continues in that same verse 14. He makes us know what the blessing is. The blessing God promised to Abraham to the sons of men through the father of faith Paul Paul says when we receive Jesus as our savior we shall receive the promise of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit who we shall receive is the blessing that God promised that he would give to us the sons of men through the seed of Abraham. In that last week, we proposed that in today's teaching, we would consider the major reason that makes the Holy Spirit the promise that God promised to Abraham for all sons of men. Among all blessings that God could promise sons of men. Why is it that it is the Holy Spirit that is the blessing that God promised to give to all men through Abraham? Now, you listeners to the word of God, who are hearing this message come along with us in studying the Bible. Let's consider the reason that it is the Holy Spirit that is the blessing that God promised that he would give to us who believe in Jesus. That thing that brought Jesus to the world as we have considered in our past teachings was that God promised he would make him the new foundation that he, our creator, would ignore Adam because through Adamic sin his own foundation for us sons of men has become that of death. He has ushered all of us sons of men into death and hell. Anyone who is a man who is born in this world is, I mean, death and hell would mark his end. That's why God promised that he would ignore Adam as the foundation but he would give to us another foundation a foundation who if the Lord has tried a precious cornerstone a sure foundation that any man who receives this no foundation 
is sustained forever according to what David said in Psalm 49 verse 9 anyone who is redeemed by this foundation will live forever. He won't see that grave again. Because this is no foundation. It's not the foundation of Satan, death, and hell. The foundation of Adam is that of Satan, death, and hell. But there's no foundation. Is the foundation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is no foundation. Is the foundation of the ever living God. Anyone who is founded on this foundation is founded on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baba, the Father. Is ever living. The everlasting Father. His world. Is ever living. Is the eternal world. Is the spirit. The spirit of God. Is ever living. Is the everlasting spirit. So there is no foundation. Who is the Father, the world, and the Holy Spirit? That let us make man. Anyone who is founded on this new foundation, according to what David says, is founded on the everlasting being, on the everlasting Father, on the everlasting world, on the everlasting spirit. So he becomes an everlasting child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When this foundation came, as we have read in Galatians, the blessing that God promised that he would give to sons of men through him is the blessing of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of life that would mean that everlasting life replaces death and hell. So the Holy Spirit who God gives it to any believer in Jesus it is he who must be the fulfillment of the promise of God to all men. For it's the foundation of life who came to the world to abolish the foundation of death that death might not lord it over us again life might reign over us there's no foundation God came to give to all men that we who receive this foundation of life and the death of Adam that the death of Adam might not reign over us again but that the life of God might reign over us until eternity will come Romans 5 verse 18 Yes. 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 But through Jesus, the new foundation, through his own righteousness, the justification of God came upon all men unto life in the righteousness of Jesus. God justified all men and said, Live. Die no more. Romans 5, verse 21. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 
she ti joba nipa iku yes be ni ki o ri o fe si le joba nipa ododo yes titi ye ai ni pe kon ni pe la totan yes ni pa se jesus christ oluwa wa ki o re o fi olorun that the grace of god anu olorun the mercy of god o je re olorun the favor of god e ya nu olorun the kindness of god e dari ji olorun the forgiveness of god e fi olorun the love of god ko e ma joba might reign lori gbogbo awa ni over us all men we will believe in the foundation to everlasting life the new foundation so the holy spirit must be the blessing to us sons of men through abraham even a thing of this what is the blessing that God promised to all men there is no mundane thing that is everlasting because this word itself is not everlasting so the blessing of Abraham that God promised to us sons of men cannot be this world or any worldly words. It cannot be this world. Any earthly blessing. According to this Romans reference. Romans chapter 5. Verse 18. And verse 21. Before grace can reign. The mercy of God. The forgiveness of God. The blessing of God. The favor of God. The love of God. Before it could rain over us the sons of men unto everlasting life assuredly certainly the blessing that God promised must be everlasting must be an eternal blessing it, it, must, it, it mustn't be a blessing that we vanish as the word will do so as we have said repeatedly the spirit of Christ the spirit of God is the blessing that God promised Abraham, to Abraham that whoever receives his seed who is Jesus that he will inherit the blessing okay, hallelujah, oh. hallelujah. now let's consider some Bible references Glory. To see who the spirit is, the spirit we shall receive when we believe in Jesus. Let's consider who the spirit is in the same book of Romans. In Romans chapter 5, yes, yes, yes. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, the apostle Paul says, We who believe in Jesus, that God justifies us because we believe in Jesus. That is, we will believe in Jesus. We carry no condemnation again. We have been justified because we believe in Jesus. That is, Jesus as the foundation is the foundation of justification, not the foundation of condemnation. Jesus as foundation is the foundation that will remove the condemnation of God from us and bring upon us the justification of God. Now Romans chapter 8 read verses 1 and 2. Yes. 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 We have read earlier in chapter 5 of Romans, verse 1, that we who believe in Jesus, God has justified us because we believe in Jesus. Now, in Romans chapter 8, it says, We who believe in Jesus, we have no condemnation again. The condemnation of Adam is no longer on us so the death of Adam is no longer on us because we have believed in Jesus the Savior who is our justification Romans 8 verse 1 yes 
Yes. 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 It's the same Paul who says that there's no condemnation for us who believe in Jesus. The Lord has justified us because we believe in Jesus. It's Paul who says that Jesus is the justification of his believers as Adam was the condemnation to all sons of men those who are in the order of Adam so is Jesus the savior he is the justification of all his believers read 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Yes. Yes. In this reference, the Apostle Paul says, God made Jesus. This is no foundation. God made him to be saved for us, the sons of Adam. Jesus, who the Bible calls the most holy. Jesus, who the Bible calls the only holy one. God made him to be saved for us, sons of men. He who knew no sin, that he might be God's righteousness for us. We will believe in Jesus, the most holy. We will believe in Jesus, the righteous and the faithful. We believe in Jesus, the only holy one. Jesus will become our righteousness. That means the condemnation of Adam is removed from us. Read Romans chapter 4 verse 25 Romans chapter 4 verse 25 and it is a picture of the Lord yes it is a picture of the Lord in Romans chapter 4 verse 25 the Bible says Jesus was delivered for the sake of sons of men he was donated for the sons of men so that he would carry away our sins According to what John the Baptist said, said Jesus was the Lamb of God who carried away the sins of the world. Romans chapter 4, verse 25 says, The Lord gave him to hands that he would carry away our sins. And, and God raised him up. God raised him up. So that Jesus would become our justification. He would remove our condemnation. The condemnation in Adam that which he placed upon us. That he would carry it away for us on the cross. And when he rose up through his resurrection then God showed that is the only one that did not see corruption for David said in his prophecy said the holy one of God God would not leave his soul in the grave the holy one of God God would not make him see corruption Sam 16 verse 10 yes David Prophet David said that the Holy One of God Jesus Christ because he was the Holy One of God God found no sin in him but at death he died he died for the sins of sons of men Jesus the Holy One of God was not a condemned one but the high priest that guilt they placed on him Pontius Pilate it is condemnation that he placed on him when they said he was guilty he carried the guilt of our sins he carried our judgment but he's the holy one of God the holy 
only one of God. Daniel. Yes, Daniel. Daniel, 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 Listeners to the word of God. Well, the sentence in this, in this Daniel, chapter 9, I shall verse 24, on the, is that Christ is the most holy, this is the, the, the new foundation, the most holy, and we listeners, we know, if we say a being is the most holy, the most holy, no one is greater than he is. He is the most holy. That's why we're emphasizing. According to what Isaiah said, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, was who came as the foundation of life. Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Was him the most holy. That he would be anointed, the most holy. What are we saying here? The one who is the most holy, but who was condemned by the Jewish elders, the most holy to God, before God, but who pounced his pilot condemned, he carried the condemnation of the sin of Adam, he carried the condemnation of the sins of the sons of men, so that he would be our justification. He the most holy. That he might be our holiness when we believe in him. He the righteous. That we might become righteous when we believe in him. So, Romans 4, Romans 4, verse 25, that he was condemned for our sins. He was delivered for our sins. He was raised for our justification. So he, the Holy One, whose soul God did not leave in hell, and whose body did not see corruption, according to what God had said, through David, in Psalm 16, verse 10. So this most holy, the holy one of God, whose body did not see corruption, whose soul God did not live in hell, Paul then says, he was condemned by the Jews, he was condemned by Pilate, and he was nailed to the cross, that he might become our justification, that he might become our justification. Now we continue. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, that truly, there is no condemnation again for those who believe in the new foundation who receive Jesus there is no condemnation again according to the Bible references that we have read earlier the most holy the only holy one the faithful and the righteous he has come to suffer for our sins he has carried our sins so he has given himself to us in his resurrection he has given himself to us once we receive him he is our holiness he is our righteousness he is our justification Paul even says so let's add it to references in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 yes 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 Yes. Ati dan de funwa. To ka se ogun yen leko si. Sugba. Yes. Ni pa se re ni eyin wa ninu Christ Jesus. Yes. Eni ti Olorun fi se ogun. Yes. Ati ododo. Yes. Ati sodi mimo. Yes. Ati dan de funwa. 
Paul the apostle Paul in this verse says through the work of God through the mercy of God through the kindness of God he, he, he delivered Jesus he delivered Jesus as our justification through this mercy of God we believers in Jesus are in Jesus this Jesus God has made our holiness. He has made our forgiveness. Made him our righteousness. So according to Romans chapter 8, with all these Bible references we have read, and with what they all say Jesus is for us, anyone who is in Jesus, who receives him as his Lord and Savior, there is no condemnation again. There is no condemnation for him again. Because he is in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus has become his righteousness and holiness. Verse 2. Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 2. Let all of you fear me, you know, Christy Jesu. Yes. Say some idiot, Minera. Yes. No one fear share. Yes. Atitiku. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 2, says anyone who is in Jesus, whose condemnation the Lord has carried and has become his justification, anyone who receives Jesus, who's saying the Lord has carried away and the Lord becomes his sanctification. In verse 2, said he has received a spirit. Who is the spirit of life? He receives the spirit of life. In Romans 8 verse 2. There we have read who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. According to what we read in Galatians. Chapter 3. Verse 14. That we have read. That when we receive Jesus. Jesus will give to us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, who Jesus will give to us, is the blessing God promised to Abraham. That he will give to all those who receive the seed of Abraham. Now we have seen the reason that the Holy Spirit is the promise who God promised to sons of men in Christ the seed of Abraham. We have seen in Romans 8 verse 2 that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life is the spirit of life and in our past teachings we have seen that the Lord came for one thing according to our past teachings God donated Jesus for one thing as another foundation and the one thing is that death that Adam placed on humanity and Adam became the foundation of death that the king of life should come to become the foundation of life the foundation of life so that he would remove death from us so the spirit of life is Christ is who Christ must give to us his believers because Christ came to be the life of all men the Edenic Adam was death to all sons of men. Christ the Lord came as the new foundation, the foundation of life for sons of men. So when he came to the world, as we have read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, he gave to us the spirit of life, all of us who believe in him, we who receive Jesus and receive the spirit of life and we receive the spirit of life, then what David said comes true. That would mean that Lord has redeemed us from the Adamic death. We are the redeemed of God and we become children of life who will not see hell forever. We say it again. Any 
anyone who receives Jesus. To whom Jesus gives the spirit of life. As we have read. In Romans 8. Verse 2. That the Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. Anyone who receives Jesus. And whom Jesus gives the spirit of life. That the spirit of God promised. To all men. Through Abraham. Anyone who receives the spirit of life, then what David said would come true. He becomes a redeemed. He's redeemed from death. He is redeemed from hell. From that grave. Because by the spirit of life he receives, he will live forever. He won't see the grave. This Holy Spirit, we have seen him as the spirit of life. That anyone Christ gives him to will live forever. He won't see the grave. So what you see? Furthermore, we want to read the Bible that we reveal to us that this same spirit of life is the everlasting spirit. Is the everlasting spirit. So anyone who receives him, according to what Paul says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, anyone who receives it, receives him, receives the spirit of life. And he receives the everlasting spirit. The spirit of life is the everlasting spirit. The Holy Spirit is the everlasting spirit. So anyone who receives him becomes ever living who will not see the grave because the spirit of life the everlasting spirit is in him as his life. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 the Holy Spirit is the everlasting spirit Hebrews 9 14 Christi Christi yes the Holy Spirit is the eternal spirit. So anyone who receives the Holy Spirit, according to what Paul says in Galatians 3, verse 14, anyone whose condemnation the Lord has removed, according to verse 13, anyone whose cause the Lord has removed, he will give the Holy Spirit to him when he believes in the Lord. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life, Romans 8 verse 2 and is the everlasting spirit Hebrews 9 verse 14 so anyone who receives the Holy Spirit who receives the spirit of life who receives the everlasting spirit forever and ever according to what Paul says he becomes a living child of God he becomes a living child of God the promise of God that God gave to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verse 7 comes through in his life the promise God gave he would make a covenant with Abraham that in the covenant anyone who receives the covenant who becomes a child of the covenant God says he becomes his God forever and he becomes his child forever. God says it's an everlasting covenant. So God began to fulfill it one after the other. Anyone who receives Christ, the seed of Abraham, and Christ gives to him the spirit of life, the eternal spirit, God becomes his God forever. And he becomes a child of God forever. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Paul makes us understand that this Christ when he was coming to the world he came as the spirit of life there's no foundation came as the spirit of life to give himself to us sons of men that we might become ever living in him so the spirit he gives us in Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. Paul says he himself is the spirit. Because God is one. God. 
that were out inside of God. Amen. The spirit inside of God. Once again, yes. God. That were out inside of God. Amen. And the spirit inside of God. That's the only one God who is. That let us in Genesis chapter 1. Verse 26. Verse 26. God. The word inside of him. And his spirit. By whom he made all things. God. His word. Is his spirit. For whom he made all things. Is the only one God who is. So Paul makes us know. That the Holy Spirit. The spirit of life. Who Christ the king of life gives. In Galatians 3. Verse 14. Then Christ himself is the spirit. It was he who came as the spirit of life. To gave himself to us. Sons of men. That we might live forever. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45 and verse 47 Corinthians yes Adam wakorin shaju yes ala yokani Adam yes Adam wikaye yes emi sonida ye Adam wikaye Adam Who is the last Adam? Christy Olu. So Christ the Lord is the spirit that quickens the dead. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45 Christ himself is the spirit of life so was he, uh, yeah. who came to the world that, uh, yeah, it, uh, yeah, to be the foundation of life for us. Christ. So anyone who receives Christ oh, uh, yeah, receives God's quickening spirit. So he lives in Christ. Now verse 47. Yes. 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 So the Lord from heaven came as the quickening spirit. Verse 45. And verse 47. To anyone who receives Christ, according to what the Bible says, he receives the Lord from heaven. So his life is founded on the Lord who came from heaven. He founds his life on the Lord from heaven. And that becomes ever living. Who will not see the grave? That's verse 47 of 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 45 that we have read. Only Christ. Said Christ. The last one who came. They called him Adam. Adam. Said the last Adam. Is the quickening spirit. There is a lesson here. That as we are saying repeatedly, this is the Bible. God replaced Adam with Christ. He donated Christ as the new foundation. He ignored Adam as foundation. We read in 1 Corinthians 18, verse 45. Said Adam, the first man, is of the earth. Is earthy. Yes, that God breathed into and he became a living soul. But, but the last Adam is the quickening spirit. Is the quickening spirit. These are two foundations. Adam, the first man. The foundation God ignored. The foundation of death. The foundation of the curse of God on man. The foundation of 
going away from the earth and descending to the grave. The foundation that makes heaven to be shut against the spirit. Which God has ignored. That is Adam, the first man. Then the last Adam. Making two. The first one and the last one. Making two foundations. So the second foundation. The last foundation is the quickening spirit. The second foundation is the Lord from heaven. The Lord from heaven. Paul continues in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. He repeats it that this Christ that came this foundation of life is the spirit that came to make us live. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17. Yes. Yes. That spirit that God gives to us in Galatians 3 verse 14 that that spirit that the Lord gives to his believer in the fulfillment of the promise of God to Abraham the Bible says the Lord is that spirit that is in this second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 what Paul has said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 16 for the and for the seven, he corroborates. He corroborates that the Lord who came from heaven is the spirit that gives life. That is first Corinthians 15. Said the Lord from heaven. That's in verse 47. Is the quickening spirit. That's in verse 45. Now says in second Corinthians. That the Lord who came from heaven is that spirit he gives. So we will receive the spirit. We receive the spirit of God. We receive the eternal spirit. We receive the spirit that quickens. We receive the Lord who came from heaven. What David said. Yes, the word of David we are still comes true. He becomes an ever living child. Who will not see the grave. Finally, according to what the apostle Paul says, anyone who receives this Christ, who receives the spirit of life, the eternal spirit, he becomes a man of Christ and of God. And that means in this world, in eternity, is of Christ and of God. Read the Romans 8, verse 9. Romans 8 verse yes. 9. Sugar. Yes. And you go sin in Otiara. Yes. Because she didn't know Tiame. Yes. Be over Shakwe. Yes. And me along, Ben on you. Yes. Sugar. Yes. Be a mechanical banner and me, Christy. Yes. Oh, go see in the planet. Nay, Rome, or look at your ye in this Romans eight, as I can say ye, verse nine. Paul took a memo. Paul calls the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, who will receive through Christ, says, the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Christ, that is the Spirit of God. That no Christian who will receive in Christ. That's what John spoke speaks about later. Said that God gave us eternal life. That the life is in His Son. That is this eternal spirit. Is the spirit of eternal life. Who Christ gives to us? Christ is the word of God. The wisdom of God. The knowledge of God. The power of God. Christ. Who himself is the everlasting father? Who is the mighty God? John says, He gives to us eternal life. But the eternal life is this spirit of life. So anyone who receives the spirit of life, who receives the eternal spirit, 
receives life, receives eternal life. This is the Holy Spirit who Christ the new foundation gives to us his believers. And listeners, you will now realize that in this new foundation there is no Satan. That is not in him. Hell is not in him. That's three. Satan, death, and hell. They were in Adam as the foundation. They were in Adam as foundation. But in this no foundation, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are in this no foundation. Anyone who receives the no foundation, that means he receives the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What David said would come true. He becomes heaven and living child of God. And he did, we will not see the grave. Because of this, let us give our lives to this no foundation. This is Life. This eternal spirit. Let's give our lives to him. Day by day. At the end. And through eternity. That the everlasting father. The everlasting world. And the everlasting spirit. Might be our life. Forever and ever. For us to live forever. And not see the grave. The power to do so. May the Lord grant us. We who have done so. The fact, the everlasting father, the everlasting world, the everlasting spirit. Those of us whose foundation they have by the power the blood of Jesus, may we continue. And remain just people. We are yet to receive him. Let's receive him please. next week. We will continue from this juncture. May the Lord Amen. be with your souls. Amen. Christie, Latimwe, Potier, Sheshe, Botoye, Wasetigoni, 
oni wa so yin ni olusu agotan je o oludare olu ijo wa wa ni popo na ilesha si ilu akure lati ma awon ebi ti e ka wa wa ni osogo ile ife ibadan akure eko ikare adu ekiti atawon ilu miran e fi atejise yin ranse si odo ejo o kan odo ejo odo meta to tele ra won eta arun ati o kan e darapo mo wa fun wakati ire ayo won la la si ko yi kan na lo se tun bo ai kan ti ti dai yo